Senator Martucci, thanks so much for being here. Thanks for having me, Dan. Anytime. So you've been named the top ranking Republican on the Commerce Committee, which deals with commerce, economic development, and small businesses. Small business is obviously a top priority of the Republican conference in the state Senate. Tell me from your perspective what the state could be doing right now to help small businesses at such a tough time. Well, first, our state needs to be focused on ways to make sure that the tremendous burden that's been placed on the unemployment insurance system doesn't translate to our small businesses. So many of our businesses were closed by order of the state, and understandably so, uh, to help folks with, uh, protect folks from the pandemic. But today, uh, there's conversations about translating those unemployment costs back to our small businesses. We also have to be looking at very practical things that provide immediate relief, a restaurant industry that's absolutely on its knees. Uh, so many of our commercial um, tenants who need help paying their uh, commercial uh, rents. And, and, and on and on. But I would tell you that one of the things that I'm focused on is making sure that we provide immediate relief to our businesses because we don't have time to help. You know, once a business closes, it's nearly impossible for a business to reopen. Just zooming out, the committee that you're on also deals with economic development in general. That's been a huge thing for the Cuomo administration over the last decade, trying to boost these different regions of the state through these economic development initiatives. While you're on the committee, uh, what kind of initiatives would you like to see the state take? Do you think the Cuomo administration is, is doing good in the strategy that they've chosen? So I laud the governor and his administration for their focus on economic development in this state. I certainly think there are some questions that have to be answered if we're really getting our bang for our buck uh, with respect to all these economic development dollars. Just myself, I prefer a method that involves translating those resources down to local IDAs and local LDCs, because I feel like every community in New York is very different. And each community uh, understands the best way right now to provide support and quite frankly, help save its main street businesses. And I think as I look at what's going on right now, I want to make sure that moving forward, we're, we're treating small business in the state of New York with the same respect that we're treating our large businesses. And while I think we've got a good track record of creating incentive for some of our big businesses, right now it's time for us to save Main Street, Dan, because if we don't do it now, we won't recognize a Main Street anywhere in New York when this pandemic's over. You know, speaking of big businesses versus small businesses, Democrats are considering some tax hikes on the wealthy in New York. We don't really know what that's going to look like. And I'm curious from your perspective, how do you feel about that proposal? Is that something that you could get on board with or are you against that? Well, what I prefer to look at first is the waste that exists in our current state budget and our current state pet spending plans. Uh, you know, before I ask any New Yorker to pay more to be here, before I ask anyone who's trying to run a business here, uh, to, to contribute more, I think it's time that we take a hard look at the budget, full review of the budget process from top to bottom. And, you know, to be honest, I hear there's a whole, all these conversations about hard decisions have to be made in the budget. But when you look at some of the absolute giveaways that exist in the budget, like, for example, a half a billion dollar Hollywood film tax credit, what's clear to me is that there are some very easy decisions that have to be made, doing things like removing tax credits like that. So I think the state's economy is something that we could talk about all day, and it deserves to be talked about all day. But I want to ask you about your position. So you're one of two Republicans that were able to flip a seat from a Democrat in last year's elections. Aside from this committee that you're on, the Commerce Committee, what other type of priorities do you have? So besides commerce, which is which is a place that in, small, in protecting our small businesses, which I believe is, is, is really important, more important now than ever, um, I'm, I'm focused on taking a look at a, a couple of, of other important things, too. You know, first, certainly property tax relief is a huge issue here in the state of New York, and particularly for our seniors. So here, just in my first week of office, uh, my team has drafted a bill that would help our seniors who earn less than $100,000 a year be able to afford to live in their homes. Other things that I talked about in the campaign, which are really center point to issues going on in our state right now, is public safety and public health. I was outspoken against the bail reform changes. Uh, from the very early, early phase, which I believe put so many of our residents and our communities at great risk. We heard from a law enforcement and uh, our district attorneys around the state and so many others. Um, so certainly public safety is, is right up on that list. And um, third, and finally, I would say is helping protect our farms. The district that I represent is a very rural district, and we have a number of farms, family farms, and recent changes uh, in the law, specifically the farm labor bill, have made it so difficult for our farms to continue to operate. That, again, has only been magnified by the pandemic. So I'm focused on ways that we can help our farmers here in New York.
And speaking of helping farmers, there's another big issue on the table this year, the legalization of marijuana. Obviously, the recreational side doesn't really affect farmers all that much, but there is also the opportunity for the expansion of the hemp industry. And I'm wondering from your perspective, because I think that people are divided on this issue, do you think that the state should legalize marijuana? And do you think that uh, expanding hemp requires that legalization? So, Dan, I'm not completely against uh, le the legalization of, of adult use uh, marijuana. You know, what I am interested in doing, though, is making sure that we as a legislative body deliberate it in the right way and bring the stakeholders in the room who this is going to affect. I think when you look at the way that policies are typically advanced in this state, big public policy, I use bail reform as a key example, you'll see that that was a, a set of public policy changes that were made that didn't involve the stakeholders and it wasn't done right. So what I look forward to doing is being part of the conversation and making sure, you know, the governor certainly has outlined that legalizing adult use recreational marijuana is going to be a priority for this year. I want to make sure as a legislature, we play our role in terms of bringing in the stakeholders and making sure we get the details right. There'll be a, there'll be a good way to do this and there'll be a bad way to do this. And what I want to make sure we do is we don't do this in typical Albany fashion, you know, which means making decisions in the dark of the night with no public deliberation and excluding the folks, the interest groups that need to be part of the conversation. Yeah, hope springs eternal that things will change up here in Albany, but we will see. State Senator Mike Martucci, thanks so much for being here. Thanks for having me, Dan.